was with wax era, estilo de cera, and the other one. When I was little in Germany, I was fascinated by Mexico. I had heard about, you know, the Mayan culture and had seen images of Chichen Itza and, and or images of Teotihuacan and I was like, wow, um, it was amazing and I had, it was like a really cheesy novel I had read about a Mayan prince and um, but I it felt like it was I could it was a place I could never be it was like it was too exotic too far away I guess it was a dream for me to come here and I was dreaming that dream early on you know and it took all these you know I needed to live in Paris, I needed to live in New York um, until I was ready to, you know, you came to here. come here. Great, so you are living the dream right now. <laughs> I, that sounds very hippie. <laughs> <laughs> no, tenía no, nueve años, diez años. Me acuerdo un dibujo que hizo. Más tarde en la, en la escuela, el profesor de arte um, he asked me and another student to come. He would give us like private drawing, le lecciones de dibujo. Mm -hmm. And me acuerdo, el, me senti, senti una conexión con el lápiz, el gesto. Me impresionaba mucho. So maybe that's where you know I first sort of found some like gift in me where which I wanted to explore but becoming an artist is also not so easy I I ended up not going to an art school um, so of course then you question you know how can you what is becoming an artist is it something you can learn at school in an art school um, is it you learn about other artists or is it something, where does it come from? Of course I had, I felt I wanted to be an artist but it took me a long time. I find really work that is meaningful, maybe I only, where I think I can say this is really interesting, this is good work, maybe only since 15 years and I'm, I've been doing it for 30 years. So then I wonder what was I doing before? And I needed to um, maybe be... Uh, it takes a while to be who you are. you are. I spoke about the distance I need to... I needed to learn about what you... what I do, like the... Um, like a detachment maybe. Um, the other thing I find Im important in my creative process is the power of imagination. That I connect to some, a landscape or, or an object or a motif and it gets my imagination um, going. I guess as an artist you, you look out and try to, you know, discover what is out there but also you kind of look in and try to find who who are you. I guess I found New York at some point boring for different reasons. You know everybody thinks of course it's a fabulous place to be and but it's extremely um, competitive and uh, money driven. It's uh, dinero, dinero, dinero. Um, and I found at some point my, um, my work as an artist is not only about money. It comes, I'm, I'm more interested in, you know, responding to different cultures, um, 
responding to my own culture, mixing what I, where I came from and who, where I'm, where I'm at. And I found when I got to Mexico City a few years ago, I found it incredible for its history. Um, it's it's long history. It's different. In Mexico, I find they have a very direct approach to stone, for example, and to clay and to the sun also. And um, all of these I found incredibly inspiring. You know, when I step into the Anahuacali Museum, all, like, all the art I was doing before happened in, let's say, the, the white cube. You know, like gallery spaces, museum spaces, they are white. Um, they're meant to, you know, display your art perfectly. Um, but as a, as a stage, um, you know, they're very discreet. And, they, and that's so different in the Anawakali. It's the opposite. There's there's texture, there's, there's dark stone, um, there's difficult light. Um, so I started to respond with the volcanic rock sculptures, which to me are sort of the manifestation of my painting series, um, which I explained earlier this kind of motif of the head that turned into a volcano. Um, I also found a really nice dialogue with um, the ceilings, which are incredible at the Anahuacali. Of course, Diego Rivera is such a huge figure um, worldwide, you know, in Mexico. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, I don't feel like, um, I, I find uh, I could freely kind of dialogue with, um, with, with his idea of the building and what he did. I didn't feel um, sort of oppressed, oppressed, you know. I, maybe that's the genius of Diego Rivera, that he allows um, another voice to coexist I think when I moved to Mexico, what happened was I, I left the, this kind of marketplace, which is New York, where your art exists in a white cube and it's for sale. I, I moved in here and I found I can make work in dialogue with the space. Um, Abejos del Futuro, I think it's only, it's, it's, it's a new, what do you call it? I think I'm syn synthesizing the volcanic paintings and um, the sculptures, and so I think something new is um, is growing. So I'm kind of fascinated, and I'm observing myself what is happening there. I think it looks really great there. So you are like evolving? Exactly. I think. As I was working for the show, this was actually the last painting I made. Um, I, or, I completely had envisioned it should hang where it hangs. And for that particular space, I wanted this kind of floating uni universe. Is it, is it an embryonic figure? Um, that's why maybe I called it Abejos del Futuro. I used actually fire in my paintings at some point. I started to burn my canvases. Uh -huh. Maybe that's the beginning of my volcanic obsession.